Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Pivot Boss Pre Market Report for August 26th, 2016. I'm Frank Ochoa, aka Pivot Boss. Here's a look at the ES and the daily time frame. Uh, the big thing to know is obviously uh, Janet Yellen, Fed Chair, will be speaking later on this morning in about an hour and 20 minutes. She'll begin speaking. So that's really what the market has been waiting for. So yesterday afternoon, uh, the ES pretty much closed the day within the range that it established throughout most of the morning. Uh, we continue to hold just at the lower edge of the, the current two, three, two to three week trading range, which is developed from 2167 up to about 2190. 2168 continue to be a very important key level in this chart. And uh, right now, you know, any failure to hold above the bottom end of this chart here opens up a move in the 58 half with a shot at, at seeing a, a reversal back toward 2145. Obviously, with, with what Janet Yellen may say or may not say, that could influence a move either way here. Uh, a, a break above these recent highs, 2177, opens up a return to 85s to 88.5. But remember, 85 is that important level. Every time price gets beyond that zone there, it doesn't get far before it starts rotating back down. So should price push above these 85s, 90 uh, just keep in mind that if it starts to break back below 85s, you're likely rotating back toward the bottom end of the current range. All right, let's take a look at the intraday time frame. Here's a quick look at the intraday. You can see again, very, very quiet overnight and pre-market trading activity. Uh, not really much to say at all. 76 quarter down to about 71, 75, about four and a half points of overnight range right now. Very tightly coiled price action. Um, mostly chopping around VWAP has since pulled back a little bit, but you can see here's the current range, 77 to about 67. And that's the range to trade at the moment. So if price gets above 77s here, you gotta be looking to fade it back down. Uh, if price gets down below 67, you gotta be looking to fade it back up if you see rejection at those ends. Uh, right now, trading right dead smack in the middle of that range offers no edge at all. So really, there's not a whole lot to do at this moment. we got to be patient. All right, let's take a look here at crude oil now. Here's CL. Let's take it over to a daily time frame. Here we are. Uh, what you'll notice right here is, you know, we've gotten a really, really aggressive squeeze. The pullback here has stalled on two-day lows. And now the expectation is that we'll see another squeeze, perhaps toward the outer edge of this range between... 5017 and 5104, somewhere in this zone. We have three days of trading these lows now, and now we're on the fourth day here where bulls have defended the, the pivot range right at the midpoint of the previous session and are holding above that area. Obviously, we have a very tightly coiled multiple day range in this range, uh, building out right now ahead of uh, what could be um, a breakout sometime this afternoon or this morning rather. So if we do break to the upside, getting and establishing acceptance above 47.25 would be important. Pushing back above 48s would be important. And that could start this thing going much, much higher. Um, continue to watch for signs of a push below these lows though. I, I still think that, you know, coming back into value could still be, uh, you know, enticing for some market participants. So pushing through these lows would cause a move back into value, but that could still be defended for a continuation higher. We just have to see which way we come out of this range and look for a continuation move in that direction. All right, let's take a look now at the intraday time frame. Here's a look at the intraday. For the most part, uh, yesterday was a trading range day. For the most part, throughout the day, we saw the early squeeze uh, that we were looking for. Uh, but then after that, price basically just traded in the range. For the, throughout the rest of the session. Now we're trading at the upper edge of this range. And again, um, you know, we're looking for signs of a squeeze higher. The big time level here is 46.80. That's the level that bulls reclaimed uh, control of the market and have since held it as support. Now they're trying to establish higher support off of 47s. But for the most part, it's 46.80. So should price get back as low as that area, it's still a buying opportunity. Um, we, you know, this thing is kind of trading in this sort of uh, channel right now, and we look to be making a push higher toward the upper end of that range. 
I would say if we push through the previous sessions high here, which we are right now, it opens up a move in the 4770 and 48 very, very easily, especially with the current RTH low, or rather ETH low right there, that pivot boss ADR method target, the primary is 4805 on the day. All right, let's take a look now at gold futures. There's gold looking at the daily time frame here. Not a whole lot has changed. Uh, prices have gone offered through the FOMC level from July 27th at 1334.70. Uh, they went offered right here, pushed downward, and now they're retesting that level. So we're retesting right on that point, basically. And uh, this is an area where bears want to defend. So right now it's starting to become in that zone where after taking that level offered after it being bid for several times, this is the first major attempt where the bears want to, to defend for a shot at extending the move into the support level. If by the end of the day price closes back above 1334s, that would be uh, basically a rejection of prices below this zone and that could easily lead to another move higher. So. Uh, right now, 1334, very, very important, as is 1330. Uh, we've got to watch those levels as the pivots today. All right, let's take a look at the NQ, lastly. There we go. Bringing this thing in. Um, this one, obviously, has been very, very bullish. We've been talking about buying pullbacks. After every one or two-day pullback, we've been seeing great buy opportunities. And right now we've seen a two-day pullback. Uh, this was the digestion day where it held. You can also see 47.65 is still a key level there. It was resistance. It went bid through that level and has held it ever since, including over the last couple of days. That tells you there is also an increased inventory of sell stops below that zone of the bulls that have been defending. So breaking below 47.65 would be significant on a swing basis it would run those stops you easily get a move in the 47.30 with a likely sh shot at retesting the FOMC level back here uh, at 46.90 so this would be very very important if price were to break back below 47.65 so a close below that level would be significant today uh, I still believe that with the current trend of the market any pullback into that zone likely considered a buy opportunity uh, if we push above these recent highs here, it could be a squeeze day, remember? So if you're going to run the stops here and whatever the low is down here, you can then calculate that distance from where the stops is to that low and then calculate it up. That could be where this market squeezes toward. So we could have some very, very nice targets here to play toward. Uh, if we look at the intraday time frame for a moment, there we go. Uh, what you'll see right here, again, very, very tight overnight range, 47.86, uh, half or, or quarter, and you have 47.75, 75. So basically an 11-point range right now, not a whole lot of range for overnight trading, and that has occurred at the center of the previous session's key range there. So not a whole lot of edge right now either, just a whole lot of trading activity. So at the very least, uh, as we head into Yellen very soon, uh, the idea would be to fade new highs back down and fade new lows back up. That's the early idea. So you have to just be patient and watch for the edges. All right, that's it for now. Let's see how this thing plays out heading into the new trading day. Good luck, trade well, and happy Friday.